<laughs> okay, let's uh, start this lecture. So I'll take a look at the assignments, okay, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll mark it, maybe not. If I don't mark it, I'll return back to you and you mark yourself, okay? <laughs> Depends on how much time I can find. But uh, anyway, uh, next Tuesday, right, so only next two Tuesday and then another two Tuesdays will change to the morning class, okay? Yeah. Because we couldn't find a, a classroom for all the rest of the uh, term. So um, before we uh, move on, we look at the, we'll look at the specifically a couple of examples, okay, particularly using uh, the Puma robots to demonstrate this uh, Denovit-Hardenberg uh, convention, okay, and setting up uh, the forward kinematics. But I need you to do a one, uh, two exercises here, okay, to uh, just to uh, get uh, get used to this um, uh, homogeneous transformation matrix. So, first example, let's see. I'll draw three frames out of here. Okay, so this is a first frame. Okay. And then the second frame. Y1, Z1. Okay. Third frame. This goes up. Okay. okay. So, if I draw the three frames that are here, and I want you to write down T10, T21, and T20. Okay? A few minutes, can you write it down? It's losing a red color somehow. Eh? It's not a cable to my computer. Is it plugged into the wall? Uh, it's plugged into somewhere inside here. I can't access. So you're you're ready to write this uh, homogeneous transformation matrix is you you just have to remember huh what does homogeneous transformation matrix contain it contain a three by three here this is what that's right and then there is a three by one translation okay, so that's the uh, the guideline you need to stick to right. So for this particular one here, what is T10? R represent is the orientation of frame one with respect to frame zero. D represent is a translation, right? Basically, you draw a vector from this O0 to O1, and that will be your uh, translation. Okay? Yeah. R is orientation. Basically, there are three columns, right? Each column is the direction cosine of uh, each one of the axes with respect to the previous frame. Okay? So x1, x1's direction cosine with respect to your frame 0 is the first column. 
Okay, so zero, zero, what? One, huh? Yeah. Second column is the direction cosine y1 in the uh, previous frame. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then the third column is the direction cosine was that one in the previous column. One, zero, zero. And the last column is the displacement from here to there, or the position, right? Or the position of this O1 in the previous frame. So let's say this is one unit, okay? This is uh, another one unit, and this is another one unit, okay? Yeah. So the displacement here is this is along the y axis, so it's a zero. Look it, right? Hmm? Yeah. So T two one okay, similarly. And you can get X two with respect to this frame. Okay. Y. Good. And Z two. Good. Then the position vector for this point in frame one will be. One, yeah. In X direction, Y direction, no Y direction in the Z direction. So negative one, right? Yeah. Are you all comfortable with this? Yeah. Because this is the type of kind of midterm question. I would just probably put it there as a quick check of understanding of your rotation and translation homogeneous uh, transformation idea, right? Yeah. So, technically speaking, your T two zero should be what? Time T two one, right? Yeah. So you can do that, but uh, you can also use what we just derived, what we just did it here, right? To write down this T two zero, huh? Yeah. So I want you to verify that you know uh, if whether you what you what you uh, what the, what you get from the multiplication would be the same as what you write it down directly, huh? Right. Of course, it should be. If they don't, they're not the same, then uh, then there's something wrong, right? So maybe write so write down here. What is the displacement first of all? Let's see for this one here. So it goes all the way over there. So it has a Z naught is one, X naught is one. I uh, know. Is X naught? No. no. Uh, X naught is negative one, right? And Y naught is one. Hmm? Can you see that? Yeah. And then one, right? Okay. Yeah. So orientation wise, you can try it find it out. Okay, but if you take a second look at this one here, okay, the way that the frame is assigned here, suppose this is some kind of a robotic system, right? Are the frame assigned here satisfy the DH convention? Hmm? Right? Of course the question is what is DH convention? So what's the DH convention? There are two constraints, right? And the first constraint is x i needs to be perpendicular to that's right. And second condition is x i needs to be intersecting the 
previous z axis. Okay. So apparently the th the frame sign here, you know, this x1, it's not perpendicular to z naught, right? It's not according to the DH convention. Okay. So now I'll just slightly change this one out. Okay. Slightly change the frame here. Let's take a look at uh, um, the new frame assignment. Okay, so this is my uh, base frame. Okay, then for the second frame, okay, second frame here, I'm gonna assign my Z1 over here. Yeah. So where should be my x one? Mm hmm. Use a um, forward. Yeah. So I guess you would try this one here, right? Can it be this way? You could be, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's choose this way here. Then the the corresponding y1 is going to be this, right? Right hand rule. Okay? So, the other frame, okay? Now, if you look at the other frame here, the other frame original is sign over here, right? There's a sign here. Let's say if you still want to, uh, if you want, still want to sign the origin of the frame over here, would that, would that be possible? Well, I guess I had to sign a, a Z2 axis first, right? If I still want to sign uh, the Z2, let's see. Uh, let's see, hypothetically speaking, where's my Z2 in that particular? The Z2 is signed here, right? Okay. So if the Z2 is signed here, is it still possible to assign your X1? Okay, with the origin of this frame over here. Is it? And where would be that direction of x2? You mean straight up? Well, if it's straight up. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys see that? Right. So you still want your x two to be perpendicular to this z axis, right? And still you want your x two to intersect this previous z axis. Okay. So straight up is one option here, right? Okay. Yeah. So if you extend that right here. Then y2, it's going to be this way, right? Okay, right hand rule. Huh? Yeah. So, this way, the frames are signed according to the DH convention now. Then, now let's try this uh, exercise here. How can I nail down the value for the DH parameters? What are these parameters? It's alpha, a, d, theta, right? Okay. And corresponding to, uh, let's see, maybe this is link one and link two. Okay. So uh, this is the handout that I give it to you in the previous lecture, right? What you need to basically stick to is right. Stick to this convention here, okay, for finding properly the DH parameter values, okay, at least the initial values, huh? Yeah. Is that good, right? So, just quick review here. Say so that AI is basically distance between the two z-axis, right? Generally, we call that. Uh, uh, link lengths, right? Link lengths. Okay. 
and alpha i is the angle between the two z axes. We call that link twist. Okay. Yeah. And z and then di is the distance between uh, the two x axes, two adjacent x axes. Okay. Call that link offset. And theta i is the angle between the two adjacent x axes, and we call that uh, link angle. Huh? Yeah, rotation basically. Okay, so now stick to that uh, table here. Uh, if I wanted to write this one here, let's see. Hypothetically speaking, there is a robot robot here. So what's the first set of a DH parameters? Alpha one. What's alpha one? It's angle between these two zx about x. So between z naught, z one about x one. Okay. So Z0 is here, Z1 is here, about X1. So how do you rotate about X1 such that Z0 goes to Z1, right? That's what it means. 90, 90. clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah. yeah. So counterclockwise basically means it's a uh, positive. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so AI is a is the distance from the previous zx to the current one along the xi axis. So from here to here along this x1. So let's say suppose that from here to here is a1. So we should put this one just simply a1 here. Right? Yeah. And then d is the distance between two adjacent x-axis along z naught? Okay, now this is along the z naught here. So d is basically from x naught to x one along z naught, right? Along z naught. So in this case, it should be what's the distance between the two x-axis? No, it's not fast enough, man. Interesting. This thing is still recording here, eh? <laughs> well, we'll see how it happens. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. So what did it record huh, in the last few minutes? So di is the distance between the two adjacent x-axis. They intersect, so this should be zero, right? And theta i is the angle between the two adjacent x-axis about the z naught. So, how do you rotate from x naught to x one about z naught? Right, that's the idea. So, ninety degree is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah. Huh? This counterclockwise. Yeah, positive. So, uh, you know, this question here, you know, I I don't know which one is the variable. Basically, maybe revolute join is a variable, maybe it's a prismatic join. This is the variable, right? Yeah. So usually what happens is you know which one is a revolute joint or a prismatic joint, but you still need to put down the initial values at here. Let's say if this is the variable, joint variable, so what you do is you just this guy plus the first joint. Okay? So this value represent is whatever the subsequent angle mo uh, movement of the joint. All right? Yeah. And this value just represent is this is the initial value there or where the, the robot, right, started to move, basically, okay, yeah. So the, the second rule here, similarly, alpha i is angle between the two z-axis about x2. So it's 90 degree, right? Then ai is the distance from z1 to z2 
which is which portion? It's this, right? Let's say that's A2. Okay? Does that make sense? So D, A, A is a distance from here, here, along the X here. Okay? So that's A2. Because along that direction, x2 pointing to that the same direction as you go from z1 to z2, so this is the positive, okay? If your x2 actually pointing down, you should put a negative a2 here. Hmm? Yeah. And di is the distance between uh, the two x axes, between these two x axes here. From where to where? From, from x1 to x2 along z zero. So from x1 to x2 along z, not z0, along z1, right? So let's say this distance here is d2. So what should I put here? d2? d2? From x1 to x2 along z1. Negative, exactly. Right? Because you're going from here to, to for going from here to this distance, but it actually is along the negative direction of z1, right? Okay? And then theta uh, theta 2. This is 90 degrees. Yeah. Uh, about which axis? About z1. So, yeah. Okay. Is that good? So that's just some kind of a mock-up of a situation here to to write down the DH convention. This is something I I probably can uh, very quickly without giving you a big robot. Here are some frames, right? And the frames satisfy the DH convention. Okay, can you write down the uh, DH parameters according to the frame assignments. Okay, and then what do you do next? And then you can next is the question is okay. So what is the T one zero and what is the T two one? Right. So how do we calculate T one zero T two one? And in the uh, in the class we have uh, showed you this one here. This is the general formula, right? This is the general formula for calculating the forward kinematics, basically the homogeneous transformation matrix based on uh, the DH parameters. Huh? So you look at this one here, what do we do? So the theta you replace with this, okay, for the first row here, okay, for the first row here, theta replace with that, alpha replace with 90 degree, and AI replace whatever that value is supposed to be, right? And then di replaced with zero, then you can get the t10, huh? Yeah. And similarly, you can get t20, uh, uh, t21, right? Yeah. Then you multiply the two, them together, you get t uh, t20. That makes sense. So, uh, if you want to verify, you know. You, you can try the same approach. Then the same question: Can you write down the homogeneous transformation matrix between these two frames? So you can actually write it down without even use the DH parameter, right? You know, you can basically look at this one here. Oh, look, what's the rotation matrix? What's the translation matrix? That makes sense, right? Well, the only difference is uh, when we write the uh, homogeneous when we write the homogeneous transformation, we have the theta here, right? So basically, the theta uh, you, you're supposed to keep the joint variable as part of the, you know, variations, okay? Yeah, because you might have a ro joint rotation then the T matrix will change. That makes sense, right? But if you set your theta one, theta two, any one of them is initial, if you set them a zero degree, right, keep the 90 degree there, then whatever you get from here, supposed to be the same as that you figured out just based on the observations between the two frames of these two frames, right? Yeah. So uh, the way I see it is basically the trick. When you how how would you verify basically verify uh, what the, or your observation with the computation? If you see any difference, uh, then that means some 
where you know you're the minimistic, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Hmm. Alpha or Z1? Hmm. Alpha or Z1? Hmm. Alpha from Z0 to Z1 with respect to if it's not X, it's Z1 after that. Alpha doesn't change. But, so, for example, if X0 is changed by theta1, hmm. don't we have to add it to alpha? No, the way that DH is signed, the alpha doesn't change. See, let's say, imagine this, right? If you have a, uh, if you have a, a change around this axis, that one here, huh? Let's say you have a rotation about this x one, or maybe even let's say you have a rotation about z naught here, right? So remember, this frame is the rigid attached to a. To a body out of here. So when you're rotating about the Z naught, the frame will rotate at the same time, right? As the link. Hmm? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all about the way the, the people put the constraints on it, right? Yeah. Good. Um, the other thing I want to point out is, okay, uh, given a robot, often in time that uh, there's a tool attached to this any factor. For example, you know, you may call this, you may call right at this location, you may call this is end a factor. Okay, you may call this is any factor. Okay. So if this is any factor, then you attach the tool to the any factor, right? Yeah. And then people will see is uh, let's assign a tool frame to the tool. So the tool frame is basically uh, is actually the actual orientation you really care about now, right? So you how do you orient the tool, right, to a certain orientation and a position to achieve the uh, required operation? So the tool frame, in general, we use this n, s, a, three vectors like x, y, z, okay, to represent the tool frame. Okay, so this is a tool frame here. And n is basically the, the x, y, and z axis, right? Yeah. Now, how do we assign a tool frame then? The a, which is the z, you already, let's see if you, this is your tool here, okay? The a is perpendicular to your palm, okay? It's pointing to the approaching direction, okay? That's your a, okay? Yeah. And s, okay, the s, is basically, is a cl if, if you have a, a gripper, huh? If you're a gripper, then the close open direction of the gripper is a y direction, okay? Is a y direction. And then and the last one, the, the x to satisfy the right hand rule, okay? To get the x direction, okay? So basically, a is the approaching direction. And y on the y s, okay, the s is the uh, close and open, okay, of this gripper direction. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you call it the, the sliding direction, okay, it's the sliding direction. Okay. That's how you assign this in s a. Okay, so essentially, uh, in the end. What you end up with, you you might so basically, you, if you remember in the previous lecture, let's say you have n number of joints, or n uh, then you end up with a tn zero, right? So n is the frame at last at any factor, okay, at any factor. But you might interested is what is the uh, let's say this this if this is the frame, uh, this is a tool, this is a tool frame. What is the uh, the tool frames homogeneous transformation matrix? With respect to right the base frame, so what do you need to do? You just need to multiply this T A naught with another T, but it's this T T with respect to the last frame. Okay, this last frame. Is that okay? 
Yeah. So just remember, basically, you got to you got you, you got to be clear as to how you assign your tool frames, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's they should be assigned properly, right? Okay, so that's one thing to be clear. So now let's look at uh, uh, the DH convention exercise this on the actual industrial robot. Let's say use a Puma robot in here, okay? So this is the Puma 560 robot, okay? And this is supposed that this is the robot once you bring it in and it's look like this, okay? So we can call this is the ready position, right? The ready position here. So let's see how do we assign a DH frame, get a DH parameter, D, uh, assign frames to this according to DH convention, and uh, obtain the uh, DH parameters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, you need to understand, you know, what kind of motion does it have, right? Uh, it does have a motor so that when it rotate, the whole except the base that I hear, everything else basically will rotate, right? Yeah. And then you have a joint over here, right? And when the rotation about this joint, it's essentially it's the whole arm will rotate. And you also have a joint over here, and uh, the front arm will rotate. And then you also have a joint, okay, over this direction. So, and when, when rotation about that joint, so this piece, see that piece there, right? So that piece will rotate, okay? Yeah. And then you have another joint uh, over at this location here, okay? At this location. So the rotation about that joint, uh, this this piece here, okay, will basically rotate like this, right? Or like this, okay? And the last joint, the basically the number six joint, is uh, to have a rotation rotate to this piece here. Okay, so this will piece. And that's actually your any factor. So typically, basically, you can attach your tools or frames, you know, basically whatever tools to this uh, any factor at here. All right? Yeah. Okay? So six joints. So, so if we do the DH, uh, what are the typical uh, procedures? Number one, identify the joints. Number two, assign the Z axis, right? To each one of the joint, okay, z-axis. So in this particular case, first one, okay, the z-axis is should be because your rotation is this way, so your z-axis should be, okay, along this vertical line here, right, along this vertical line, okay. Now, if you remember, for the first frame. Or in other words, the origin of the frame, first frame, because you don't have a previous link, right? So you, you're free to basically place the origin of the first frame anywhere along this z-axis, okay? The first joint. A uh, lot of literature, they place the, the first frame over here at the bottom here, actually, which is one, I have another one here, we'll exercise uh, for a different orientation. Uh, but in my exam, in my electric example, when I do, I pl the, the placed the uh, a frame zero over here, which is actually uh, the intersection of the first axis and the second joint axis. Okay, yeah. So let's uh, draw the second axis here. So second axis should pass through this center axis, right? Okay, the center axis like this. So let's say I'm choosing this is this Z1 over here. And uh, choose, okay, this is the intersection in here. Choose this is a Z0, okay? Yeah. So basically, O0, okay, is at this location, okay? X1, uh, sorry, X0. X naught is also free to go, okay, because there's no previous joint. Um, in actual Puma, okay, in actual Puma, 
if I remember correctly, X0 is probably pointing this way. So basically perpendicular, so this is a motor here, right? That motor, if you draw a line over here, that's your Y axis. So X0 is, is actually basically in the perpendicular direction, okay? The Puma, an actual commercial uh, Puma robot. So having said that, basically what it means is uh, your X0, right, should also be pointing this way here, okay? So let me put this as X0 in here for, for now, okay? And then we'll put uh, figure out a way for the Z1. Is that okay? No, not, not X0. X0 is not perpendicular to the next one. It's the next X1 should be perpendicular to Z naught, yes. Okay. So second frame is about this along this Z Z one is along this axis now, right? Z one. So where should we assign this uh, uh, Z one axis then? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, where should we assign the frame one then? Right? Frame one. So what what you can do is you can as actually your choice is is uh, uh, infinite. But we can assign the frame one the same uh, origin the same as the frame zero here, right? So basically means I can assign my z one over where over the same location as this z one. Okay. So this O naught is also. Uh, okay, in my lecture, I actually signed a uh, differently. So I signed Z1 to pointing that way. Okay, pointing that way. Well, that's fine, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it does make a little difference, though, huh? It does make a little difference. So point the Z1 to that direction. And O1, O0 is here, and O1 is also here. Is it red color? Which looks better? So the black color. Hmm. Is that good? X one. So here's X one. So where, do, which direction shall we service shall we assign the X one here? X one has to per, has to be perpendicular to Z naught. And in this case, Z naught Z one, you know, the they intersect each other, right? So if you remember, the, uh, the way to assign x1 is we can assign x1 as z0 cross z1, right? Or you can also assign it as z1 cross z0. Either way is fine, right? Either way is fine, okay? So in this case here, my x1 is, I'm, I'm going to assign my x1 as here, x1, okay? Make sense? Okay. Next joint is a rotation for this arm here, right? For this arm. So there should be a joint, okay? Basically, Z2 joint, okay? Z2 joint somewhere at here, okay? Z2 joint. Now, to be consistent, my previous rotation, Z1 pointing inward, then I'm going to point that inward too. Okay? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the question is where shall we place this O1? Okay? This, uh, the, oh, sorry, this is not Z1, Z2, right? Where shall we place the origin? The origin of, the f of this uh, frame 2 at here. Okay? The frame 2. Now, as you're gonna see that is basically is uh, there. There also again there are different ways placing this O2. Okay, placing O2 here. The reason because what's the what's the relation between Z1 and Z2? They are parallel, right? So technically, you can place your O2 anywhere along this Z2. Okay. Yeah. Now, imagine this, right? Maybe I can place my O2 along this line here, right? 
Maybe I can place over here. Hmm? If I do this, that actually will make one dh parameter to be zero. Which is what? Which is the if I place here, then my x2 is here. Then the distance between x1 and x2 becomes zero, right? Okay? That's the d basically that d d value will be zero. However, you know, if you remember, what's the next one? Next there's an, another joint motion about here. If you place here, then the next dh parameter won't be zero anymore. Right? Okay? So particularly speaking, uh, instead of place this one here, okay? So we'll consider the next z joint motion. The z next z joint motion z3, and that's the motion causing this piece, okay? This piece to rotate. Right? This piece to rotate. So the funny thing is for Puma robot, okay, the axis rotation for this piece, okay, for this piece does not intersect this Z2. It actually, there's a slight upward here, right at here, at this location here, okay? So basically, the point, the, the blue dot that I draw here is not on the surface of this arm. It's somewhere inside the arm here, okay? So inside the arm, you can imagine inside the arm, there is a sort of a crank, and the crank rotation, okay, will cause this part, this piece here to rotate. Okay. So if I draw if I draw a horizontal axis here, that's your Z uh, Z three here. Okay? That's your Z three. Is it okay? Yeah. So There is a little bit offset here, okay? There's a little bit offset. And that offset, as you can imagine, right? That offset you can imagine. This is if this is uh so let's draw a bigger one here, Z2. And this is Z3. And this little offset is gonna, what we're gonna call is A3, okay? It's A3. So those those physical dimensions can be obtained by uh, taking a proper measurement. Okay, so Z three is going to be this way. Then my X three, okay, or X two. So basically, I'm going to try. What we're trying to do is we align these two in the same uh, line here. Your X two will be over here. Okay, will be over here. Okay. X three. Okay, how about X three? X three is the x axis okay, x axis right here and that has to be perpendicular to z2 right to z2 now you can either go upward or downwards right so x3 so let's choose x3 downwards at here okay yeah is that good so it's running a few colors running on here so let me maybe uh Kind of a, I'll draw another one here at, at the bottom here, okay? But uh, let's finish. So Z3 now, and then Z4, so the fifth joint. Z4 is causing the motion, okay, of that piece here. It's through that joint. So let's make sure it's uh, uh, consistent to that direction, Z2. So we're going to draw lines like that. So this is a Z4 and here, okay? The direction Z4. X4. X4 has to be perpendicular to Z3. So natural choice is going downwards, X4. So basically, X4 equal to the cross product of Z4 and Z3, right? So uh, it's actually Z4 cross Z3. That's X4. Z5 is something called the rotation of this little uh, plate at here, right? So we can place the Z5 joint same over here. So Z5 is over here, okay? X5, X5 needs to be perpendicular to Z4. 
So I can actually can assign x5 the same as x4. Okay. The last frame is a frame attached to this any factor here, attached any factor, and there is no motion. Okay. See the last frame. There is no motion about the z-axis of the last frame. Okay. No motion. So your z6 really you can assign your z6 just to be consistent with the previous z5. So your z6 you can move a little bit uh, you know forward. See z5 origin is over here, right? The frame here. So we can move this frame a little bit uh, to the center of that uh, any factor. Okay? Move a little bit to the center of the any factor here. Then then you draw the z6. Okay? Z6 here. And x6 needs to be perpendicular to x5. So let's see, moving down here, so x6. Okay, so x6 is perpendicular to z5, right? And also perpendicular to the z6. So all together, you get all the frames now, right? You got all the frames. Okay, so putting the frame on the robot may not be very clear because you got so many other lines and curves. So what I typically do is, um, I draw another basically diagram here just to illustrate the frames that we assign here. So for example, uh, here's my first frame Z naught X naught, right? Here's my first frame. And here is my Z1 and X1, okay? Because the two frames share the same origin. Then we go going forward here, okay? We're going basically see we go forward over here, right? Go forward here. And then up to this point, then we go a little bit to that direction uh, until it meets the origin of O2 here, right? Meet origin O2. So basically the drawing is going forward here and then going uh, to that way a little bit until this location. And that's your O2 location. And Z2 pointing to the inside of the page and X2 it's this direction, right? In this direction. So there is a little offset at here, a little offset. So imagine, does that make sense? Now look at this, right? Here's your body, right? Here's your body. This is your Z not axis, right? And here is the Z one axis, huh? Yeah. So from here, from here up to this location, from here up to this location, there's a little offset, isn't it, right? There's offset. And that's basically this offset here, okay? This offset, okay? Yeah. So that's Z2, right? So let's look at here. This is Z2. Z3 is over here. Z3 is a little bit on the top of Z2. So going up a little bit, okay? So I'll, ex I'll ex exaggerate a little bit. So going up a little bit here. And where's my Z3? Pointing this way, okay? Yeah, right? And where's x3? x3, uh, according to our drawing, uh, we, we choose it to pointing down here, right? Choose pointing down. Okay? Yeah. And then from z3, it keeps going, going forward. Keeps going forward until which location? Until this location here. Okay? And then you have a z4. And that goes that way here, right? Goes inwards. And then you have this uh, X4 here. So X4 going down here. Okay. And Z5, okay, frame 5 share the same origin. So Z5 is over here. And X5 is the same direction as X4. Okay. Yeah. And the last frame is you go from this origin a little bit off forward here up to this location. Then you have the Z6. And X6, we choose. Pointing this way here, okay. That's it, right? That's all the uh, frames that we assigned according to uh, our choices. Huh? Yeah. So, if we wanted to label uh, the uh, joint axis, then what do we have here? So this rotation give us theta one, right? Give us theta one, okay? Yeah. And about this z one axis. Now, you you gotta basically look from 
on the other side of the page, right? Look from this is Z1 pointing to you, and then you draw a counterclockwise direction as a positive direction for theta 1, not for theta 2, right? For theta 2. So what should I draw about the theta 2? So we actually should draw the theta 2 like this, right? Okay? Yeah. From this direction is clockwise, but when you look from that direction, it's counterclockwise. Okay? Look from the inside of the page, right? Yeah. And x2 is this direction, a theta 3. Okay? Z3, it should be this direction here, right? This direction. Theta four, Z five, same uh, Z Z four, same thing. So theta five, Z five, going this way, theta six. Okay, so that's the uh, six drawing motions set uh, here. Is that good? Yeah. No, Z six about Z five, not about Z six. Theta six is about Z five. No, you have a joint. Z5 has a motion. What's Z5? Z5 will cause this little piece to move. They don't affect any factor to move. Hmm? Okay, so attach anything to it, just to the second or? No, Z6 is just a frame attached to the last piece of the link. Frame 6. But Z5 is a, is a, is a axis cause this last motion, this motion of the plate. Huh? See here, right? See, this is a DH here. So you have a link. You, you always have to have a frame, a last frame attached to the end of the robots, right? You got to have one there. Yeah. Okay. But there's no motion, right? Remember, right? Yeah, for the last joint, for the last link. So, uh, more specifically, the distance from here to here is A2, from here to here, D2. From here to here, okay, it's A3. Okay. And from here to here, it's D4. Okay, because that's the, that's the distance between the two x-axis. Okay. And then from here to here, okay, from here to here, this is a D6. Okay, D6. That's the dimension basically. Okay, when you uh, you have a robot, you measure this. Okay, you have dimension here. Okay, so let's let's practice the DH now. DH table. Uh, alpha I A I D I theta I. So what are my? Uh, this is the link here. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay, yeah. So can you um, write down a couple of these values, right? According to the frames orientations like this, right? Yeah. Just to practice, can you? Alpha one. Alpha an alpha one angle is between Z naught to Z one about X one. So when you rotate about X one, ninety degree clock or counterclockwise. Rotate about X one from here to here. It's a uh, clockwise, right? Yeah. No, X1. Okay. Huh? Yeah, you use your uh, this table here. Okay. So, how much? Negative 90. And A is a, the translation between the two Z. Should be 0, right? Uh, uh, yeah. And D is the translation between the two X. Should be 0. And theta is the initial angle from Z0 to Z1 about Z0, from X0 to X1 about Z0. So that should be 
How much? Negative or positive 90? Positive, right? So plus theta 1. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, is that good? Yeah. So keep going. What's the second second rule here? Second rule is compare frame one with frame two. Alpha angle is between the two z axis, which is zero. And A is the distance between between what? Yeah, between the two z-axis, so a2. d is the distance between the two x2, x1, so d2. And d2, if you remember, the d2 is along, right? d2 is along the z0, no, z1, right? Along the z1. So does that make sense? So yeah, right? Along the direction. So that's fine, right? That's fine. So it's positive, OK? And then here. Theta between the two x-axis, it's zero, right? Okay. Okay. So third row. What's the third row here? Between these two frames, x2, z2, x3, z3. Alpha. Negative or positive? Alpha, right? Always go back here. Alpha is the is the angle between z i minus one z i about x i. This is x three. How do you rotate about x three such that the z two goes to z three? Ninety, right? So you you got to look from downwards here. You know, what's that? Right, negative nine, Cl counterclockwise. Huh? Does that make sense? Z2, Z3, right? Positive. Okay. And the distance between the two Z axis, it's A3. And uh, what's the distance, right? Distance is A3 along XI. Along x three, it should be. It actually should be what? It should be negative, isn't it? Right? Yeah. So the distance from z two to z three along x three. So it should be negative, right? Oh, I have a mistake in my lecture notes. That should be negative, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so here D, it's a zero between the two x-axis, right? Okay. Theta, keep going like this. Theta is what? Okay, ninety degree, because the two x-axis perpendicular, right? About the previous z two. Okay. Right, so one's this way, the other this way, so counterclockwise, yes, right? Yeah. So this is kind of tedious now, so I'm going to just basically write down a form here, okay, so you can practice yourself. Here? You mean this number? Uh, you mean this number here? Yes. So alpha three is what is alpha again? It's between z two to z three about x three. This is about x three. So you need to basically x three is going down and right? looking upward. That's x three. And then z two that way, z three this way. So z two this way, z three that way. So how do we get from Z2 to Z3? So you got to rotate from here to there, right? It's a... Uh, huh? 
all coins. Why? No, you see? This Z2 point in the Nawi, right? Z3 point. Huh? Oh, yeah. Wait a second here. The clock coins are kind of clock coins. Okay, this is Z2. And that's Z3. Rotate Z2 to Z3. That's the kind of clock coins. Huh? <laughs> Did you get it? No, that's okay. okay. So anyway, so the rest was zero plus theta four, zero plus theta five, and zero plus uh, theta 6. And the last one, 0, 0, and d6. Okay? This is important because you, if you messed up with one negative number or or, or, or your, you know, degrees, yeah, the whole, your whole thing will just go crazy when you do an animation, right? Yeah, you don't even know where it's going to go, actually. Yeah. Was that good? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to try this. Which is now is the way I did is remember this a little offset here, right? This little offset here, basically the little offset between Z two and Z three is very tiny actually. It's uh, only twenty millimeter, okay? It's about two centimeter here. So uh, it actually will give you a little bit of trouble in terms of the inverse kinematics. So it's just a little more inverse uh, computation there. Because this is a learning, this is a, you know uh, just teaching and learning. So what I do is, what I if you wanted to use a Puma, so what we can do is we can assume the two Z axis here, the Z two and Z three, or the two origins here, just assume they share the same origin. Okay, they intersect. That's fine. Okay, yeah. Because mechanically. You know, this is not a real robot. This is just a simulation, right? You won't notice anything at all, basically. All right? And that actually, it doesn't harm the the general concept. And uh, well, all you need to assume is, so inside this arm, there's a joint origin here. And that origin, if you have a Z2 going uh, this way, let's say, then the Z4. Okay, we assume that basically the intersect. Okay, so that's your Z three. Okay, yeah. So that will make the life much easier. And lots of other industrial robot essentially is this kind of mechanism. Okay, yeah. Um, the reason that they have a little offset at, at that stage, I think it is mostly is because of mechanical design. Where can we fit? You know that. Um, little motor into this uh, uh, arm there, right? Into the arm, okay? Yeah. With a better design, you can get rid of the A3, and that actually will uh, give you an edge in terms of the calculating inverse kinematics, okay? Yeah. So for simulation purpose per view, you can assume that kind of condition, all right? Yeah. Okay, so for this robot here, what I want you to exercise is, to do this, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll give you the frame assignments here, and then you, you come up with the DH parameters, okay? So I'll draw my DH like this. So I'll assign the origin at the bottom here, okay? At the bottom. So this is my Z naught, this is the X naught. So basically, the X naught i chosen is actually pointing this way here, okay? Along that, um, the motor axis, okay? So remember previously, what's the, what's the x naught direction? We chose the x naught direction this way here, right? Yeah. Okay. So this just shows you the flexibility set here, and then uh, we go up, 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 up to that location there. Okay. Up to that location. Okay. And then you have the z one. So the previous one, z one pointing inwards. So now let's pointing out uh, out of page here. Okay. Out of page. And uh, x1 needs to be perpendicular to z0, 
So I'll choose x1 uh, for this direction here, OK? Yeah. Then from this origin, we go along this direction. Go, 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 go along this direction. OK, go, go, go here. OK, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe make a little bit uh, angle here just to be a little bit 3D sense. So x0, x1 like this. So go, go, go until somewhere, you know, basically here. Then you go inward, OK, a little bit until you at this location inside that joint there. All right. Yeah, so at this location, and that's going to be our Z2. So I choose my Z2 to be this way here, OK? Z2, okay. same direction as Z1, OK? Then the Z X2 perpendicular to Z2, so X2, let's see, this is my X2 here, OK? Yeah, so last one, uh, Z3. So Z3 is the one causing the rotation of that joint. So Z3 should be perpendicular here. So let's say my Z3 is this way. So share the same origin at this location. Okay. Yeah. And X3, I'll choose the same as X2. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. So and th and then goes up, 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 up until this location there. Okay. Then Z4, so Z4 will choose that to be the same direction as Z2, okay? And X, X4, and then we can choose X4 as this direction, okay? Yeah. And Z5 uh, is going to be the rotation, cause the rotation of the plate, so Z5 We'll share the same origin, and Z5 is over here. Okay, it's over here. And X5 is going to be the same as X4. Okay, yeah. And the last one, Z6. So basically, it goes up a little bit here, right here. Then Z6, okay, uh, along the same direction as Z5. And X6 to be the same direction as X5. Okay, yeah. So that's the way for this sign in here, okay? Now you can put down the DH for based on this frame assignment. Okay? But before we put it down here, let's take a quick look here. What is the relationship between two adjacent x axis for this frame assignment? What is the relation between the two adjacent x axis? X1, x naught, they are x1, x2 x2 and a 3, x3 and x4, x4 and a 5, and x5 and x6. They all parallel, which means that the initial angles for the theta, initial angles of theta, they are all what? Zero degree. Okay, they're all going to be zero degree. So this location is what I call, it's a zero position. It's a zero position here, all right? Yeah. So as a matter of fact, if you have played the industrial robot, you know, you have a command window, you type in ready position. So the robot will go to the ready position, not this position. So a ready position is probably the position like that uh, in the previous picture. If it has zero position, it'll basically go to this position I show here. Okay? Yeah. So every industrial robot has a zero position. Okay? Um, some zero position is you know, it, it goes this way and then pointing down like that. Huh? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. And some ready position, sorry, some ready position is like that. Okay, but there every robot has a zero position though, huh? Yeah. So try this out, right? And uh, uh, I'll I'll put down my results that are here, you can verify uh, if you get the same thing as mine. Alpha I A I D I theta I. And this is link one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we get uh, 90 degree, zero, D one, zero, plus theta one, zero, A two, negative D two, zero, negative 90, zero, zero, zero. 90, negative 90, 
zero. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, this thing here. So let me put down a couple of things. This is the uh, this distance is d1, and this distance is a2, and then from there to there is d2. From here to here is d4. From here to here is d6. Okay, d6. Yeah. So those dimensions we can easily find them out if we have the cat, or you can look up uh, uh, the uh, uh, the specification to find those dimensions. Right? Okay. So. This is critical. You get this right, and then you'll get those uh, trans homogeneous transformation right. You get all the homogeneous transformation right, and then you can get the forward kinematics right. right? Now, um, in, on, the, on the connect, I have uploaded uh, uh, a uh, MATLAB file contains basically the, the subroutine for calculating the uh, for calculating the uh, uh, homogeneous transformation matrix, so this file here, okay, it's called a TMAT. Yeah. So basically, you can just uh, uh, plug in the corresponding a, b, a, i, alpha, 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 i, a, i, d, i, and the theta, i value. It'll generate to the homogeneous transformation matrix, right? Yeah. So. Robotics Toolbox also have one, but uh, uh, I've, I've been using this one uh, here. All right. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start the inverse kinematics next lecture. Okay. That'll be interesting. Right.